Hello, everyone. So for last week and this week, we asked you to take a look at a show um, of your choosing and review it in a conversational manner. It's a, it's a little different than the academic tone that we've taken so far this year. Um, and it's a little more creative. It's not completely informal, but it's not as formal as say as, a, as an essay. So what Mr. Belson and I are, Mr. Belson and I are going to be doing today is taking a look at each one of our essays and trying to figure out how can we revise it to make it better. And remember that revision is re-seeing. It's seeing something different. It's not just proofreading. You should be proofreading. You, if you see a comma error, if you see a spelling error, error, you should definitely be changing it. But for the most part, we're looking at ways that we can stylistically make this more appealing to our audience. Mr. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 If I can jump in here, I mean, when we're writing reviews, it's something that people are gonna read casually and they're looking for entertaining writing. They're not just looking for straight information. They're reading these because, well, they're not sure what they wanna watch, right? Our whole point of a review is to give a, an audience member, a reader of your article, the chance to get a glimpse inside of what an episode is really like because there are so many options out there of shows to watch or you know things to ingest we're, we're kind of laden with all of these options that people want to be entertained even when they're reading about entertainment so we're not going to just kind of stick to the facts give straight plot summary we're going to kind of insert our own ideas we're going to be opinionated we're going to give people what they're looking for which is is this a show that i could talk to my friends about or is this something that might be a waste of my time um, so with that, um, let's start with my review. Yeah. So Mr. Belson, since you wrote it, let's hear it in your voice. Sure. Why don't you, you read it and then I'll critique it. Okay. Excellent. So I'll just give it a straight read through and then we'll go back and revise. Imagine a lavish Victorian hotel seated next to a crystal clear lake. Inside the doors, you have access to finest, to the finest service and food while outside you enjoy wooded trails, water activities, and the ability to control the weather a place where no wish goes ungranted, provided you have the funds. In his satirical science fiction dystopia, Upload, creator Greg Daniels explores a world where finding heaven is a consumer's experience. The premise is simple. If you have the money, you can buy eternity. And yes, it comes in a variety of colors. In a not so distant future, programmers have found a way to steal your conscious self from your physical body and upload it into a virtual world. While the concept of transferring consciousness into other bodies or worlds is a bit tried, see Alter Carbon, Forever, The Matrix, etc., this show focuses on the capitalistic nature that is ingrained in our world. This lighter take on the afterlife focuses on Nathan, Robbie and Mel, whose carnal desires lead him to his own premature death. While his character is superficial and vapid, his sentimental side emerges when left to the afterlife while still in his prime. The show's main appeal is Nathan's angel, Nora, played by the multi-talented Andy Allo. Nora is a sensitive, impassioned young woman who works for Horizon, a company that owns and operates Lakeview, the Cadillac of posthumous digital dwellings. She cares for her aging father, whose ailing health and prospect of death prompts conflict between them. Allo provides emotional depth and sincerity to an otherwise slick yet shallow cast of characters. Nora's vibrant and complex life is set in juxta uh, juxtaposition to Nathan's simple way of dying. In Upload, you'll find humor in the satire of her own consumer-driven world present in a traditionally sacred place. Seeing ad bots in heaven does leave me nervous as it suggests the big companies can reach your wallet even when we are dead a dream that I am sure leaves company execs salivating. Featuring a few interesting but non-consequential predictions about a future society, Upload is for the viewer looking for that show that entertains with darker humor and existential musings. Just remember to pay for your Prime subscription. Very well written. Um, uh, and it's interesting reading Mr. Belson's review because he took a, a much different approach than I did. So we're just focusing on style right now. So 
One, the first thing we ask you is re read your review aloud. If you hear any sentences that do not make sense or are awkward to read or listen to, vary your syntax or just diction to improve the clarity of the sentence. And syntax or diction is, um, they're very closely related, but what they are, sorry, um, diction refers to the choice of words in a particular situation, while syntax determines how the chosen words are used to form a sentence. So syntax is the order of the words and diction is the, the, the word choice, which words you use. So I'll start here. So one thing that I noticed that uh, didn't sound as crisp as I wanted it to, um, was this sentence right here. So I'm gonna put this in here. And just remember that when we um, talk about shows, longer shows, we wanna italicize them. Um, so in Upload, you will find humor in the satire of our consumer-driven world present in a traditionally sacred place. And I felt that this sentence should have started with this sacred place. Um, in the beginning, because the the sacred this is the the focus of the show is more on heaven than it is um, our world. So, Mr. Belson, maybe you could have switched the order of this sentence and said something like, "In upload, And I don't know, do you capitalize heaven? Do you not capitalize you, it? You would have capitalized it. Okay. Um, is marred by consumer driven motives. Um, similar to Now, Mr. Belson doesn't have to agree with me, but this is one thing that he could do different. This is seeing a sentence differently. And I like the, the switch here of prioritizing the sacred place of heaven in the sentence. And that's something that we can think about in all the sentences that we write. Whatever idea comes first is gonna be what's kind of present inside of the mind of our reader. So by starting with obviously the title of the show, Right, we're kind of getting them placed inside of the series. Next, we're going to the sacred place of heaven, which is, for the most part, the primary setting of this show, if you haven't seen an episode. So by putting them there, it gives them a better representation of what they would see on the screen and is marred by the consumer-driven motives, right? That's kind of more direct way of saying what I had said with, we'll find humor and satire in our consumer-driven world. So I like this concision. I do like the order of it, and I think the syntax does improve the sentence overall. I think- uh, And we also I, remove the word you. Correct, and so that makes it a little less um, informal, makes it a bit more formal in tone. So the next thing I wanted to focus on was um, add more details. Reviews include specific examples from a show to give readers vivid glimpses into what they potentially may watch. and. You, you begin to talk about um, the emotional depth in uh, Nora's character and how she cares for her aging father whose ailing prospect, whose ailing health and prospect of death prompts conflict between them. So here's a vivid moment that you could have really focused on, Mr. Belson, and maybe uh, add a quote from their conversation. And I think this is a great suggestion, Mr. Cauley. This is a moment of the series, or at least the, the pilot episode, where we really get to understand Nora and her father's relationship in a very brief but powerful moment. And it goes unresolved. It's left to be decided in later episodes. So I think including a detail here, one does not spoil 
uh, the show as the first episode, you're not going to get the answer to that larger conflict, but it does bring up that uh, existential musing that I referenced later between, well, what is better? Trusting to a heaven that has been promised in biblical writings and religion or taking the sure thing, which is these co um, kind of company created heavens, you know, albeit with their glitches and uh, foibles. Good point. Um, so the next thing I wanted to focus on was this idea of uh, variation in your writing, whether that's sentence starters, word choice, or sentence length. And one thing that I noticed that you could work on, Mr. Belson, is, your, is the variation in your sentence length. Um, and one way you can check for this is if you highlight your sentence and you hit Control Shift C, and you'll see Mr. Belson uses 22 words in this sentence. And then if we take a look at this sentence, and that's a long sentence. Um, and then in this sentence, he uses 25 words. And then in this sentence, he uses 35 words. So I'm just gonna take this paragraph right here and I'm gonna paste it here. And my suggestion, and I'm not gonna do it for you, you can, you know, Mr. Belson would do this on his own because this is his writing, but I'm gonna say suggestion, um, try and add, you know, try and, very very yeah your sentence length these sentences are all about the same length and not only are they all about the same length but they're all a long length which can bore and tire a reader's kind of focus especially if they're reading for kind of quick hitting information and they want to be entertained so to avoid being long-winded in a review is, a, is another thing to kind of consider. Good. Um, and some common style missteps. Um, Mr. Belson does not have any of these uh, pretty easy, you know, words that, that are in his sentences um, because I'm sure that he did a little bit of review before he, he you know, he finished his last sentence, but these are just really things that we want you to focus on that you should not have in your writing. Um, uh, so I'm gonna, that's about it for Mr. Belson's uh, review. Let's jump into my review and then Mr. Belson can take a look. So I will read it and then Mr. Belson can uh, critique it. What are we doing? This is the question I repeatedly asked myself watching the first episode of Greg Daniels' sci-fi comedy Upload. In my own life, as the Amazon packages repeatedly pile up on our front door, and as we continue to accumulate points on our credit card, I wonder if these are examples of progress or regression. Open app, browse, add to cart, process, shipping, your order has arrived, points earned, over and over again. But maybe the real question isn't, is the relationship between Amazon purchases and credit card point accumulation a societal boon or detriment? It's, is our technological advancement leading us to something much worse than fiscal irresponsibility? But what could this something much worse be? Enter the pilot episode, welcome to Upload. In the not so distant future, consciousness is transferred to our virtual world, to a virtual world. Hamlet's question is finally answered. No longer do you have to bear the whips and scorns of time. You can just sign off on a tablet, have your head eviscerated on an operating table, and be wished away to an eternal paradise, if you have the right amount of money. Nathan Brown, played by Robbie Amell, finds himself in this situation after a self-driving car crash. The 27-year-old computer programmer has to make a split decision between taking his chances on the operating table and spending his eternity in Lakeview, a cushy afterlife model in the Grand Victorian Hotels of the United States and Canada. Nathan is handled by Nora, played by Andy Allo, his customer service representative, who makes sure he acclimates to his new surroundings. Once he is left to his own devices, however, Nathan comically stumbles through his first day at Lakeview. And while comedy permeates the episode, the undertone of societal illness is unavoidable. The world of Upload, and undoubtedly our own, has succumbed to the all-consuming commercial America. 
To venture into the afterlife in the traditional fashion is, absurd, is as absurd as going to the mall to buy a CD. Hamlet fears the afterlife, wondering what dreams may come. Well, the fear of the unknown is gone because it's been monetized, packaged nicely in an app, waiting for the right customers. What are we doing? Excellent. So thank you for reading, Mr. Cauley. And one thing that you'll notice about our styles in writing is Mr. Cauley's is a lot more personal. We get a lot more of his thoughts, his personal musings as he was watching the show. And frankly, I think that that's a benefit to this type of writing. And I think that you get a lot more personality in this writing. But as we go through and look at our first revision, Read your review aloud. If you hear any sentences that do not make sense or are awkward to read or listen, vary your syntax or diction to improve the clarity of your sentence. So the one that I heard, and I think Mr. Cauley kind of felt as he was reading it, was the first sentence of the second paragraph here. So I'll highlight it and move it down. And actually, I'm going to take this one and the one after it. And I did forget to put a question mark at the end of detriment and a quotation mark at the end of irresponsibility. So. And that's why we read aloud, because we make those mistakes. And it's not a big deal. Writing for the first time is not our best writing. And it takes you know, time. And it takes looking back over our writing to pick up on all the mistakes. As I was reading mine and was listening to Mr. Colley, I was like, yeah, duh. I have a lot of errors in my writing. I need to go back and fix those. And here's another kind of example of that. So as we read this aloud, we can kind of see what Mr. Cauley was talking about. But maybe the real question isn't, is the relationship between Amazon purchases and credit card point accumulation a societal boon or detriment, right? It's our, or it, it or it's, is our technological advancement leading us to something much worse than fiscal irresponsibility. But what could this something much worse be, right? And Mr. Cauley's going in there and fixing up um, the things now, even though we want to see those flaws, Mr. Cauley. No one's perfect, right? Yeah. So I'll leave the polished version to Mr. Cauley here, but I think some suggestions that I would make on this one, right, would be not only the proofread, but also um, making sure that our questions are kind of clearly stated. Um, so we start with but maybe, um, which kind of leaves us to kind of thinking, we might wanna be a bit more direct there. So maybe we just cut both of those and say, the real question isn't, right? That kind of gets to the point a bit quicker, uh, as opposed to kind of musing and letting our audience kind of dangle there for a bit in their own thoughts, which is a stylistic choice. Mr. Colley doesn't have to agree. It's just one thing that I could think. So I could say, um, cut to the chase, kind of in the beginning there. But and then also in the middle there, it's is, um, that kind of is is, is a little bit uh, awkward as well. So we might be able to find a better transition between the two sentences. Good, good point. The two questions. So as we slide down here, right, the second thing we were asking guys to look for in your reviews is adding more detail. One thing that Mr. Cauley does a lot of is include a lot of details from the show. Um, so as we go back and look over this, we can kind of highlight a few of the things that he put in here. So the first package, or excuse me, I'm reading the first uh, paragraph here. Uh, we see that it's mostly details from his own life. But as we move into the second paragraph, that's where we get to see some of it start to um, kind of come out. We see in the not so distant future, we see that it's transferred to a virtual world or kind of left hanging there. It's really the third paragraph where we get to see um, the details. Here's one where we see Nathan kind of die in a car crash, right? Um, we also see Lakeview, a cushy afterlife modeled on the Grand Victorian hotels of the United States and Canada, okay? Um, and here's where we kind of could maybe use a little bit more, um, where Nathan is handled by Nora. Um, Nora's kind of glanced over here, where we get a lot of Nathan, who is our main character, uh, Nora actually is, I would say, equally as, kind of shares the lead role in this um, series. So I think by giving Nathan and the setting some vivid details, and then Nora, who just is a customer service representative who makes sure he acclimates to his new surroundings, I think this is an area where Mr. Cauley could add a detail that kind of better lets our reader or his readers picture um, who this character is. 
So I'm gonna put that down here in the vivid moments and say, give Nora her time, right? She needs it. Give yeah. Nora her image. Give her something that kind of makes us see who she is. Um, build your writer's voice through variation. So read over your writing and try to find areas of repetition. So Mr. Colley actually does a great job of avoiding this. He doesn't use too much repetition. However, one thing that we see throughout is we see a lot of quotations, um, kind of whether they are internal thoughts or they are questions. It might be something that you would be able to kind of um, find another way around it while it is kind of a, a little bit repetitive of what are we doing um, and then something much worse. Uh, we see a lot of air quotes throughout this. So I don't think that we need to get rid of all of them, but maybe use it a little less frequently here. So I'm gonna write that down here inside of um, the rough draft. I'll just grab a few of these and put them in there so he has concrete examples of what I'm talking about. Um, here's some here, which is at the very end of his paragraph or his review. I'll take some from the beginning so we can see that there are a lot of them in here. And you know, guys, sometimes, um, sometimes even in, in my own writing, I, I, don't, I don't know whether to, to italicize my internal thoughts or, um, or, or use quotation marks. And I've seen different types of reviews where um, they do it differently. But in, in my own personal writing, I, that's a goal of mine is to, to get better at uh, figuring out what the appropriate um, formatting for those types of internal thoughts or um, those types of questioning in your review. Yeah. So, and here I'm not telling Mr. Cauley that using these thoughts and using these quotes is, is a negative. I'm just saying that for variation style, it might not be best to, to go back to the well so many times um, and kind of maybe leave it for that opening question and then the nice clincher at the end might be a nice succinct way of kind of using that more effectively as opposed to peppering it through uh, the rest of his writing. And the last thing here is search for common style missteps, which are the simple adjectives, the intensifiers, uh, and unnecessary phrasings. And as I read through Mr. Cauley's writing, um, he's done a good job of avoiding this as well. I, I was kind of focusing, trying to find one or two within the writing, and I really couldn't. Uh, he uses vivid language, uh, and is able to kind of um, convey not only you know, the show's plot, but the characters in unique ways. So he did but a good job avoiding But it. remember guys, like, you know, Mr. Belson and I have been writing for a long time and, and these are all, these common style missteps are, are things that we don't write, we don't use in our writing anymore, but at one point we did. Um, and we've just learned how to, how to get them out of our writing. I know, so, I can say for me after, you know, reading student work for six years and, and having to, you know, cross out the word vary and say not needed or replace, uh, it has definitely become a, a red kind of alert sign when I see myself write it. So I try my best to avoid those things. So guys, the game plan for, for this is Mr. Belson and I have gone through and we've unsubmitted all of your assignments from last week. So our expectation is for you to not only fill this checklist out, but also make revisions in the writing from last week. And you can feel free to submit it again when you're finished everything. Um, Mr. Belson, do you have any closing comments? I mean, guys, from what I read, and I can speak to my class, uh, we, we have a really good basis. All of you guys were able to really get the plot down, uh, but now it's going back and, and not so much altering our content, but really looking at the way we presented the information and how can we make our review a bit more personal, how we can make our review a bit more interesting to our reader and also work on our style of writing. What is my voice, right? This is one of the first times we're really kind of discovering who I am as a writer and how can I make my personality come through inside of my writing. So take those chances, be a little bit more creative and how you present the information and, and have fun with it. This is supposed to be a fun writing activity. I don't want you to kind of stress out over it, but take chances and, and find your style. And thanks so much. And you guys have a good rest of the week and please feel free to check in with us if you have any questions. Have a good one, guys.
Take it easy.